Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. Thought I would talk about my uh, bird hunter's knives. These are knives uh, that are designed for the upland bird hunter. Now, uh, for those who are not familiar, an upland bird hunter um, is someone who's hunting something other than waterfowl. So these are birds that are not commonly found in marshlands or uh, on lakes or rivers or something like that. You're not looking at the ducks or the geese or anything like that. These are for upland birds, the ones that are on prairies and stuff. Um, that would, in theory, include turkeys, but uh, uh, these are not knives really designed for the turkey hunter in mind. They're really designed for uh, pheasant, grouse, and uh, quail. And there are like 30 different birds out there that are referred to as upland birds, and turkeys just happen to be one of them. But these are really for pheasant, quail, grouse, and other upland birds. Now I have three different examples here. There's one with two blades, um, one with three, and one with four blades, so that worked out pretty well. I could have sworn I had a fourth one around here somewhere, but I cannot find it to save my life right now. Uh, if I do, I'll do another video. In any case, I will maybe in the future do individual videos on each of these knives but i'm not sure if it uh if uh my collection really warrants that or not i've done videos on uh case knives before so you know what i think of them and you know what the quality of them and everything else is but this very first one here that i have is the uh uh, case bird hunter and this is built on the 47 frame which is the same frame that is used on the uh case muskrat i think i've mentioned that in another video and what you have with it is uh well it's a 6247h um the six uh refers to the uh the bone handle uh, six is always the uh, handle material the two refers to it being a two-bladed knife um and the 47, like I mentioned, was the frame. The H stands for the hook. And the hook is what makes this the bird hunter's knife, uh, especially the upland bird hunter's knife, uh, because this hook is used uh, not always, but sometimes in uh, uh, bird hunting. And it's basically used to um, remove, um, well, to do some uh, basic field dressing on the bird. And what you do with the hook is basically, let's pretend this is a bird, a, a pheasant or a quail. I know it's really just a very small rubber chicken, but um, well, consider this the northbound end. Well, what you do with the hook is you insert it in the southbound end through the uh, cloaca, which uh, is also called the vent. It's basically the opening at the back end of the bird. And um, then you give it a twist until you get a hold of stuff and then you start pulling everything out. Uh, and so it's basically to remove the entrails on a uh, uh, upland bird, like a pheasant, quail, or grouse. There are numerous videos on YouTube that actually show how to do this. Uh, it does look like once you get the hang of it, it is a fairly easy thing to do. Um, the reason you would do that is basically if you're not going to um, do the field dressing on the bird right away uh, and you're out hunting, you will do this um, in order to uh, preserve the bird a little longer until you can get it under ice and, and do a proper field dressing on it. It's just to remove the entrails very quickly to uh, uh, so that the bird can stay fresh or fresher longer until you actually get it on ice and everything else. But if you're doing a complete field dressing right away, then this may not be something that a person would be doing. So it really depends on the hunter and the way they do their field dressing. Also, many uh, bird hunters will just use something like a small puko or a little bird and trout knife or something uh, for taking care of the bird and then they will have a separate hook as opposed to having a hook on a uh, folding knife that is going to go inside the handle and everything you 
can obviously see that there might be some issues with cleaning it and everything. However, um, the Bird Hunter's Knife has been around for some time, at least since the 70s or 80s. I don't know if this is a historical pattern that has been around for a very long time or not. But at some point, someone did decide to uh, put a hook on the uh, on a folder and use it as a, a bird hunter's knife. And they have been somewhat popular. I, I've seen uh, versions by Camillus. I've seen versions by Western. Obviously, I have one from Case and I have a few other ones here. And so let's take a look at these and um, uh, go over what we have here. So we'll start up front here with uh, the case, which is uh, the best of the three here also. Uh, and obviously my favorite, you see the brass liners here and uh, the back springs, the way they are uh, resting against each other. There's no spacer between the back springs. And that is the same way you see on the um, case muskrat. Matter of fact, if you look at the knife from here, you can't tell it from uh, one muskrat to the other. Even here, for the most part, you cannot really tell right away that this is a, uh, a not a muskrat. It looks like the case muskrat. It isn't until you see the bird hook that you realize that you don't have a muskrat. And matter of fact, the front blade on here, you see the muskrat blade and also a muskrat blade. That's because the muskrat blade is an excellent skinning blade. That's what it was designed for. So why change out the front blade? And then the back obviously is the defining feature of the Upland Bird Hunter's Knife, which is the uh, bird hook. And this is really well constructed. It's squared off down here and then it is rounded up towards the top, making it very strong, very sturdy. It's not going to bend or anything. Very well made. It's got a nice little angle to it and everything else. I have obviously not used it for its intended purpose, but uh, uh, I have a feeling it would work just fine. And, uh, well, it's a case. It really looks good. And build quality was spot on. Nothing wobbles on this knife. Really good snap to it, too. So I really like the case. Next is the Outdoor Life. I believe this was made for Outdoor Life magazine. I don't know, but we see there the Shield Outdoor Life. It has a Delrin handle that is, um, what would you call that? Uh, Staglon, it looks kind of like stag, but it's just Delrin or some kind of um, thermal plastic. You do have nickel silver bolsters going on. Um, you have a, a brass liners, brass spacer down the middle. And then on the front, you have a nice long clip blade. Now the clip blade you're gonna look at and go, well, that's kind of small, but here's the uh, clip on, uh, the Bird and Trout by uh, uh, Queen, and it's not that much shorter, so it's really not a problem. It is a skinning blade, and uh, the angle of it and everything else makes it a, a good skinning blade. And then down the middle, you have a much shorter, um, kind of flimsy um, bird hook, and it also has kind of a round portion there, almost like a buttonhole or a button hook instead of a bird hook. I'm assuming it would work all right, but it is not very long. So um, with that being said, I have a feeling you're going to get further into the bird with that. You're going to make a bigger mess on your knife and everything else because of how small this uh, bird hook is, but it's still pretty cool. And then uh, the other thing it has is a serrated spay blade, which is kind of interesting. You've got the little scalpel portion up there and then right here, which will be able to cut through bone and other things fairly nicely, probably help with getting wings off and such stuff like that. So I would say it is definitely purpose built for the Upland Bird Hunter. I would have liked to have seen it on a little bit larger of a frame. And finally, this is the last one I picked up. This is the Remington uh, 15724, and this is currently still available. And Remington calls this the Backwoods Congress Bird Dressing Knife Multi-Blade. And well, it's a four-bladed Congress, or it's built on a Congress frame, and it is uh, pretty hefty. It's a little bit larger than the three and seven eighths inch uh, uh, Bird Hunter by Case. So 
we're talking about probably four, four and an eighth inches long. So it's a very big uh, Congress frame. It does have the bend of a Congress too. It's, it's slightly concaved on the back there. It's got some really interesting blades to it too. Uh, we'll start here with uh, the skinning blade or the clip blade that you have up front here. Kind of interesting angle on it. Um, I'm sure part of that uh, way, the reason the clip is the way it is, is because it is built on a um, Congress frame. So that's why the bottom of the blade is very long and uh, very flat. Again, it's not the shortest blade either, though. I mean, you've got a, a good working surface there. So um, not too bad of a cutting edge going on with it. And then the other blade up front is a secondary blade, which is a serrated sheep foot. Again, uh, probably designed for cutting through cartilage and everything else. So uh, this is something that you're going to be using for uh, more extensive field dressing on the bird. Um, not to mention, it's going to be a really good uh, uh, blade if you need a cut line or anything like that. So got a nice serrated uh, uh, sheep foot and then a very long um, hook there uh, is that hook larger than what you have on the case about the same length as the hook that you see on the case but if you notice it is a little bit larger in the diameter it looks like it might be a little bit larger so you've got a, a good uh, hook to get inside the uh, uh, the, the vent and um, get a hold of the intestines and start pulling stuff out. And finally, the last thing it has on here is um, a choke gauge. See there? For um, uh, 12 gauge and 20 gauge. So also has a little tip there that you could probably use for a screwdriver and other things. But that's um, the fourth blade on the Remington, um, what do they call it? Uh, Backwoods Congress Bird Dressing Knife Multi-Blade. Well, it's a Congress, it's bound to be a multi-blade. These are bone handles. Uh, not too crazy about the uh, uh, worm group jigging on there, but it looks, um, like it's all right it could have been a little bit better it's almost like a corn cob but it's i believe it's supposed to be a worm groove looks better on the back side um, worm groove is also sometimes called winter bottom um, not the best looking but it's not bad either um, i believe it's nickel silver bolsters you see brass pins uh, however you have uh, stainless steel liners and spacers on the knife so uh, it's a pretty cool knife. I, I bought it mainly because I do collect Congress knives, but also because, well, it's a bird hunter. So it's a pretty cool knife. Um, is it as nicely made as the case? No, but it's still a pretty cool knife. Um, this one, this one just needs to be made larger and then it would be a pretty cool knife as well. Um, with that said, um, I guess, um, I'll leave you with a slideshow of these knives. And uh, if you would like to see individual videos on any of these, let me know.
let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with Tobias. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.